what I thought was pretty rich was this couple who got married solely um, to be on um, local radio and then to um, appear on television. And uh, they were asked why they split up, and they said it was media intrusion. <laughs> and he was a professional love rat, wasn't he? I don't know if he, he loves rats professionally. <laughs> yeah. That's one way of getting him out of the sewer system. <laughs> sort of like Pied Piper, except he hasn't played a flute. He's... Anyway, never mind. <laughs> I would say on the face of it, Michael Wynn is the only one that's not hosted a popular quiz show. But it can't be that, because that's too easy. Yes, and a slightly stupid answer. Um, <laughs> no, so, so quite Why is it slightly stupid? Have you uh, been taking something, Angus? <laughs> <laughs> the piss for nine years. <laughs> is Robert Robertson the only one out because behind him there's a giant owl looking at him? <laughs> It's an educational question. It could have included Claire Rayner, Richard Branson, or Paul. <laughs> I'm going to give you the answer because you're very close to getting it. Uh, the answer is that they've all failed their maths O level. I didn't take maths O level. So why have you included me in there? <laughs> I got CSE grade five, <laughs> which is one level above a monkey. <laughs> I did not fail the O-level, I did not take it. Right. In the same way that I've never failed a HGV licence. <laughs> no, I don't even get a people... reputation as a thickhead. <laughs> I'm trying to keep it quiet. <laughs> Round three, we're proud to announce, uh, features an ingenious bastardisation of a countdown favourite. To wit, and I use the word wit in its loosest possible sense, the numbers game. Oh, no. <laughs> So we have uh, 75, 17, 28, and 4. Yeah. And using these numbers, our panellists have to make the total mystery number, which our high tech digital randomizer reveals now. <laughs> I feel so at home here, it's wonderful. <laughs> Uh, using these numbers, our panellists have to make the total mystery number, which our uh, high-tech digital randomizer now reveals <laughs> as... 287. <laughs> uh, you have 30 seconds, starting now. You've We've got, got it. We've got it. Fifty-six. <laughs> Four times seventy-five, three hundred. Take away seventeen is two hundred eighty-three. Yeah, that's what we got. Mm. Oh yeah. After I've said it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Richard, tell us how you did it. Seventy-five times four equals three hundred. Right. Take away seventeen. Seventeen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. 283. <laughs> Rather familiar way of doing it. Brilliant. <laughs> well done. Jackson's what with Fayed? Football fun. Uh, yes, football thriller is in oh. fact. Uh -huh. This is a reference to uh, Michael Jackson who went to see Fulham. What's Fulham's nickname? Any idea? Uh, They're called the Fuggers. <laughs> <laughs> They're owned by Mohammed Fayed, who's got a problem with the word fug. Right. <laughs> and when, when the team comes out, everyone shouts, Come on, you Fuggers! <laughs> as a final tribute to Richard, a specially devised, or indeed specially nicked, word game, the conundrum. So, uh, of what is this <laughs> an anagram? Uh, first one to get it gets it. <laughs> Fanny oils. <laughs> it's a lubricant. <laughs> For when you're in the mood, but your body says no. <laughs> but of what is Fanny oils, an anagram. Is it an anagram as well? <laughs> it is Ian Hislop. It's the right answer. Yeah. <laughs> so Ian Hislop is a nickname of Fanny oils. <laughs> that, that, that's worth repeating, adding for night. <laughs>
Good evening and welcome to the show which, uh, according to the Daily Telegraph science pages, has a limited appeal to certain viewers. People whose brains have smaller frontal lobes have trouble getting Have I Got News For You smart aleck punchlines, preferring physical humour of the Benny Hill kind. <laughs> so just for those viewers, here's a sneak preview of round two. There really is a slubbered Amilosevic living out the East End, isn't there? I can see a lot of reporters on The Sun would probably ring him up, thinking he'd moved here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that would work well. She's called Tammy, and she's a collie, and she's so good that mm. she has 24-hour protection and a guard dog looking after her. <laughs> <laughs> her speciality is sniffing out shellfish. Is shellfish a drug? No. Then why train a dog to sniff out shellfish? I think it's illegal importers of shellfish. Some What's a rucksack full of oysters coming through Heathrow? <laughs> <laughs> you need me, sir. Did you pack these shrimps yourself? <laughs> straw nil, Liverpool one, straw OG. I don't know anything about football, do you? Uh, no, but I don't think Jack Straw is a football team. <laughs> You don't think, but you're not certain, are you? <laughs> Haig's also, I see, he's had an Ian Hislop haircut. Mm. Oh, now really? <laughs> Isn't that a contradiction in terms? <laughs> yes, how, how do you rate his new image? This is Can him we... a year ago. Yeah. And this is the new William Haig. <laughs> yeah. He has got substantially older, hasn't he, in the last year? He now looks about 70. <laughs> He's changed the hand movements. Mm. This was the Thunderbirds look. <laughs> and now he's going for the bike ride. In 1994, you claimed uh, that you died for five hours at the Prince of Wales Theatre. I've had gigs like that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What did uh, Connery call New Labour? Do you know his term for them? Uh, new Schleber. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can do an impression of Sean Connery. <laughs> well, I no, I, I wouldn't put it that strongly. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to criticise my impression. <laughs> I think he does a very good Jimmy Summerwell. <laughs> yeah. I've got a new one, actually. What's that? I've got the boy who advertises BBC children's television. <laughs> You know that Prince Philip, his brother-in-law, was a high-ranking uh, Nazi. He worked on, um, uh, no, who was it? It was Gore, uh, no, it was um, Himmler's personal staff. Yeah, it's in the Kitty Kelly book, The Royals. It's nothing it's short of a national scandal. Absolutely, let's get rid of him. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Start now. Yeah. Honk your horn every time you go past Buckingham Palace, and, and then the crescendo will build, and we'll see him swinging on a gibbet. <laughs> I think you've got to be careful right, about, yes, the, um, about the, the truth of the Kitty Kelly book. It's in the acknowledgements, there's credit to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's my, that's my arse oh. sued in court, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it's called a portcullis house. And the plants in the courtyard alone cost £200,000. How um, much do the secretaries cost? <laughs> Slightly cheaper. Where are, um, they getting, <laughs> where are they getting their plants for £200,000? <laughs> Columbia, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen this film? I have seen this Is film. Is it good? Right, are you really the only good? person Yes, that has? oh, a fantastic film. Well, why are you asking us what happens in a film which only you have seen? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I smell blood. I think we asked the question, so what was Liz Hurley's dress like? Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is what they, did she look a right old slapper? <laughs> I don't remember actually seeing it, to be honest, until what? I saw it in the papers the next day. Were you not there, then? Uh, yes, but I wasn't staring at her dress. Why not? You mean... <laughs> Are you Should coming out? <laughs> No. 
Something happens uh, in the house that made it even more valuable, which is that... You uh, went there for dinner. No. Yeah. <laughs> well, I have. Uh, Hugh uh, actually sh shags Julia. That's, that's where the sex scene takes place in the house. So. Oh, good. Ooh. Well, we wouldn't know that because we haven't seen it. No. <laughs> Spoil the film for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Hugh obviously didn't read about this. Wore flesh-coloured thongs for the scene. What colour were these flesh-coloured thongs? <laughs> <laughs> it could be a racist remark. <laughs> The colour of Hugh's flesh. Oh, a Hugh's flesh. <laughs> <laughs> you know him well, do you? <laughs> played football with him. Oh, you played football with him. Seen him in the showers. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you are coming out then. <laughs> Uh, there was a burning issue of the day that was reopened by uh, Julia Roberts' appearance. Uh, hair underneath the arms. In Britain, it seems to be an unpopular thing, but in the, con the continent, uh, you know, women just wear hair under their arms. It's there. It's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, they sometimes they plait it uh, yeah. and uh, <laughs> weave it into a kind of a little basket. Yeah. <laughs> Where you can carry apples and sundry goods. Yeah. No. <laughs> you can tune it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In 1969, a respected Australian uh, psychiatrist, Dr Nigel Parker, said, Gentlemen who wear facial hair are generally obsessive, psychopathic, impotent, or have some other sexual problem. <laughs> well, who knows, by the end of the show, Peter could be on Paul's team. <laughs> um, have you got any... <laughs> what on earth are you talking about? <laughs> Swinging from side to side. Um, it's a... <laughs> Political metaphor, Paul. I think. I don't think so, the way Good. he's got his hand on my knee, yes? <laughs> this is so I've been blessed. Mm. According to certain he photographs, uh, chaps don't wear very much at all. Mm. Ah. That is uh, George Mallory. He had a habit of... of walking around the lower slopes naked to relax. You don't say. Which is perfectly reasonable. He was a typical product of his time, an upper-class English school public school boy. Right. <laughs> well, the more worrying, I think his companion is also naked from the waist down. Is he really? <laughs> Nothing unusual about that, Ian? No, he was at Cambridge. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you test a melon, then, uh, Clarissa, to find out if it's ripe or not? You smell it. Mm -hmm. yeah, do you have to open it before you smell it? No, no, you just hold it. Do you want to hold that to your nose and see what happens? Oh. <laughs> I Can I just the ring the England test thing. selectors? <laughs> <laughs> That's right, because yeah. you smell that, don't you? Right. Okay, right. <laughs> this could be a new program oh, called Melon Snip. <laughs> Welcome to Melon Sniffing. <laughs> Lord Helsham, would you like to serve him? <laughs> Oh, look, it's got a little... Oh, look. Ooh. Ooh. It's a little... been hanging around. You can have an act for this. Hello, what's your name? My name's Bobby. <laughs> Bobby the talking meat pie. <laughs> Makes your melons look a bit sick, doesn't it? <laughs> Not often you get to say that on British television. <laughs> Rather annoyingly quick. Um, Why so, annoyingly? Uh, because, obviously, I like to, you know experience a certain amount of discomfort on your behalf. Um, You'd like to experience discomfort on my behalf? <laughs> that's, awfully, that's awfully bold of you. <laughs> Why do you experience discomfort on my behalf? So if I go in to have my hemorrhoids done, you have something shoved up your ass. <laughs> and I don't have to have the operation. That's all right, right, you wouldn't be able to hear what you were saying, though, would you? <laughs> And there is Boris Yeltsin. <laughs> also revolting. <laughs> Either he's sober and everybody else is pissed. <laughs> You're looking very trendy tonight, Ian. Do you like it? It's the no. Prince Edward look. <laughs> <laughs> First class pose. Ah, now, well, I think this is what Ian was referring to just a moment ago. First class pose is the uh, photographs of... Uh, uh, Edward and Sophie just been released on the first class stamps. Uh, oh. Yes, we can see the stamp. Oh. There we are. Do you know, every time I want to send a letter, I've got to lick Prince Edward's backside. <laughs> <laughs> it makes them look like, because they're both wearing the same colour top, <laughs> like one person with two heads. Right. <laughs> <laughs> 
in breeding. Mm. Have you been invited, Stephen? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Have you, Angus? No, I certainly haven't, no. Uh, Have you been invited to Posh and Beck's wedding as well? No, I haven't. Right, no. okay, no, so <laughs> Have you? <laughs> no, no, haven't. Well, why are we talking about weddings we haven't been invited? <laughs> <laughs> Just the subject matter is almost endless. <laughs> <laughs> it's only when we hit a wedding that we've been invited to, we can shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think Stephen probably has. Oh, uh, no, you're going to have to phone up and get the gift list, of course, and choose something off it. Have you seen what the various options are? I'm saying nothing. Right. You could buy them at Bang & Olufsen TV and Video for £4,950. That's on the list. I'm not going to. Right. <laughs> I thought I might buy them a stamp. <laughs> <laughs> so, will you be going to the stag night, do you think? <laughs> Leave me alone. Okay. <laughs> Just if you do, you'll get to meet Stuart Hall. <clears throat> no. Yes, he's going. Andrew Lloyd Webber. Stuart Hall is in... It's a knockout. Yes. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> it was, it's is a it royal friend? knockout. Oh, obviously, they oh, got together. Of course, they became and... friends after that supreme yeah. example. Is this just Edward's closest buddies? <laughs> and Stephen. You're accusing yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> I have not penetrated Prince Edward's intimate circle. <laughs> um, and the main news tonight is that announcement from Belgrade that some troops will be withdrawn over from here, Kosovo. Over here, That's it. NATO <laughs> says the airstrikes won't stop. Well, the, the DiCaprio one was quite interesting because that's was, the one yeah. in, in Thailand, not the Titanic, presumably. That's right, yes. yes. And uh, what was he doing in Thailand? He was making a film, wasn't he, of... Um, was the Beach. Of? The Beach, quite right. Mm. Well done. And <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. Can I say it's a privilege to be patronised by <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Could be musicals because ah. it's Cats the musical and there's right. the musical Sweeney by Stephen. Um, oh, and there was Sondheim. a musical ah. Robert Maxwell. Maxwell. Robert Maxwell. Robert Maxwell. So Clinton's the odd one out. Which was there's, a flop. No, there's no musical of um, Captain Fellatio Hornblower. <laughs> 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 um, Uh, now, you haven't had a, a musical written about you, but you have had a song written about you. Are you aware of this? Oh, God, I have, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, this is by a Brazilian artist, everyone. Zico Bellera, I believe his name is. Yeah. Well, that's the back of the CD cover. <laughs> there we are. Uh, track seven, and uh, although it lasts three minutes, 20 seconds, we're only going to hear a snippet of oh. it now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Oh, dear. Oh. Was there a video that went with it? <laughs> <laughs> The oh, shots of doors closing and people looking. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy? Jeremy? A uh, friend called Jeremy is the first person I ever saw in swimming. I'm <laughs> 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 unlikely they'd, they'd know that. Next, any fool can what? Host a TV news quiz. <laughs> <laughs> what for questions? Kiss. Here's the right answer. Mm. Uh, this Where is Christine Hamilton, who denied uh, kissing an Oxford student last week, stating categorically that she didn't snog anyone. And uh, to here's prove it, yes, here it is. <laughs> there we are. Oh, oh my no, God. Ooh, a little bit of biactol would be handy, that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think he could do with some. <laughs> <laughs> We must stop meeting like this, Camilla. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, I just, uh, I just posted something in there. <laughs> Prince Charles is surprised when a pint of Guinness looks at him in a funny way. Uh, reprimanded for causing such embarrassment to his family, Tom Parker Bowles, according to the Sunday People, may have taken the drug to keep him awake all night. Of course, in the past, he'd been kept awake all night by the sound of his mother shagging the heir to the throne. <laughs> you didn't want a knighthood, did you? No. 
just ask. Just, uh, just as well, really. Uh, but then he is bonkers. Yes. Mm. <laughs> there is that. I mean, he did also claim that Paul's every word was scripted on this programme, didn't he? <laughs> yes. <laughs> The main thing is the double-edged lightsaber. You see, in the old days, you just got an ordinary one with one. But now, you see, you're going to get a two-handed one. So you can do some stuff. I mean, I'm not interested in this. <laughs> well, Ewan McGregor got very excited when he was uh, wielding his uh, saber sword. So whatever they call them. Because uh, he lightsaber. Because he was actually doing his own sound effects. And they had to, they had to tell him to stop. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> well, it's um, quite a hard part, isn't it? When you're taking on the entire universe and yet you're just in a shed <laughs> with a blue cloth going whoosh. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what he was doing. It's incredible. <laughs> See, I could have done it. The young, the young Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> you would have to change out of your Simon Templar outfit. <laughs> if you're going to make Simon Templar, I'm going to make you stand up. <laughs> just to prove I have legs. <laughs> and a uh, dress on. <laughs> I think it's very chic. <laughs> I do. Oh, very yeah. chic. Well, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I will start calling you Shirley. <laughs> I'd probably say one point each is probably the fairest way of doing Why? it. Why? Why? He got the right reason, you got the right person. You said driving after I told you who Eddie Stobart is. Well, how did you know who Eddie Stobart is? Everybody knows. The truckers are having a campaign. They're sitting on the... M25. All right, let's have a straw poll. Anybody here? Put your hand up if you know who Eddie Stobart is. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> Not one person. I'm being pretty ridiculous. Yes, he is a freight magnate who... He's uh, a what? A freight magnate. Well, he's stuck to the fridge. What are you talking about? <laughs> the Furby was, was fingered as a spy in America. Um, they got terribly worried because the Furby listens to what you say and then parrots it back. And a lot of big Pentagon officials bought them for their kids, <laughs> took them home, made a few phone calls, let's bomb Iran or whatever they were saying. And the Furby the next day said, yeah, let's bomb Iran. <laughs> Which is a pretty major security risk. I don't know how they did that because our Furby never worked at all. We had to put a cushion over ours. <laughs> We did. Well, kept talking throughout the night. It was frightening. I think that would work on Brian. Yeah. <laughs> you can try. Has anyone placed a cushion over you in the middle of the night, Brian? <laughs> Take that as a yes. Yes. <laughs> it's even a Fergie. I mean, a Furby. <laughs> Well, that was a Freudian slip. That's a terrible slip. I've got a, mm. I've got a Fergie at home saying, pay me, pay me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a reference to uh, Manchester United, isn't it? Evidently. Uh, no, oh, yeah. yes, yes, of oh, I mean. <laughs> Look at that ugly, poisonous creature. <laughs> Spider saying, apparently they eat their husbands, don't they? <laughs> eat it, you mad bat. <laughs> and how much is this information going to cost? They are charging is it, people. Is it... Is it... <laughs> is it um, <laughs> well, it'll be cheap. The great smell of tar. <laughs> Cheaper than Jimmy Savile cigars. I think it's. Is it twenty pounds a time? For your no, cigars. Not the cigars. No, the information. Oh, right. The information. <laughs> I thought I was on the promise then. <laughs> the football. I was quite worried during the game because I thought Ferguson had really messed up putting Beckham in the middle and Blomquist on the left and Giggs on the right. And he's a great playmaker, but he's no Roy Keane, is he? <laughs> How well. I mean, Giggs, he was on the wrong foot. He had to go outside the marker.
What would you mean when you say Ryan Giggs had to go outside the marker? I've no idea. <laughs> How can you talk about that when it's legendary that you know nothing about football? Well, I thought if Angus can understand it, I can pick it up in a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's British submarines as well, isn't it? Mm -hmm. All those submarines we bought off the Americans are useless. <laughs> something lethal, just send Savile in. Uh, yes. Tell me when you need me. <laughs> uh, Eclipse was the right answer. When is it for an extra point? June the 19th. Yes. Nowhere near. August the 11th. Well, near enough. Yes. Is that near enough? I think probably no, two months enough. is probably not near enough. No, not near enough. Yeah. Two months out. This You're is very the... firm, Diane. Not near enough. No points there. <laughs> I'd like to see your Lady Macbeth. Go on, lie. <laughs> Go on, murder him. <laughs> do I must thou art and cordial, and shall be what thou art promised? Yet do I fear thy nature is too full of the milk of human kindness to catch the nearest way. Thou wouldst be great, art not about ambition, but throughout the illness shall attend it. Very strange show tonight, isn't it? Paul, <laughs> Paul reciting Shakespeare, Ian knowing about football. That's <laughs> very odd going on. It's got more to do with the disputed territory. Oh, yes, disputed territory, yeah. yes. Indians and the Pakistanis That's fighting right. over cash. Yeah, tell him, don't tell me. And, sorry. And... <laughs> I couldn't give a monkey's one way or the other. He, <laughs> he pretends to be interested to tell him. <laughs> but no, don't tell him. All right, I'll keep quiet about yeah, it. Yeah, we don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Oh, we, right. do. we do. We do. We do. But we're not going to tell you. <laughs> unless you ask, unless you ask nicely. Very nicely. Yeah. All eleven-year-olds must be able to read reasonably well by the year two thousand and two, mm. says the government. Mm -hmm. And David Blunkett has said that if they don't, he'll resign. Really? And it's beginning to look a bit dodgy that he won't meet the target and no. he might have to go, so he's told people to make the exams easier, I think. Is that right? I'm supposed to be telling him again. No, no, that's right. No. <laughs> I do beg your pardon. No, no, no. I just... He'll <laughs> yeah. make his own amusement. little strategy chat with yeah. my team captain. So this is very really interesting. So why do you think they've done that, then? <laughs> I don't know. What do, you, what do you reckon? Well, I've heard... I tell you, would you like some water? I'd like some water. Yeah. stronger. No. I've heard that what they're doing is that they're actually making... <laughs> I've heard that they're actually making the ex if you can't read very well, they actually right. make the exams much easier and they give you more time. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and the examiners are told to reduce the, the level. Of it. It's extraordinary. I mean, who would have thought in our day and age that something yeah. like that would happen? It's amazing. It's amazing. Couldn't happen when we were young. Absolutely, never would have done. Uh, yeah. We don't know the answer. Right. <laughs> it's much, much more fun talking to you than it is to him. Well. <laughs> Can you come back next week? Yeah, sure. sure. <laughs> I'm going to show you next week. That's absolutely that's fine. Why asked. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's what they've told you. <laughs> Paul, your popular figures are Marilyn Monroe, Karl Marx, James Major, and Prince Edward. Miles away. Um, <laughs> James Major and Emma Noble were married in the House of Commons crypt, although proceedings were interrupted halfway through when Michael Howard sat up in his coffin to complain about the <laughs> What, in daylight? <laughs> <laughs> you haven't thought the joke through, have you? <laughs> Doesn't work anymore. Uh, like you. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Margaret Cook takes what? He's yeah. up the arse. <laughs> Promise me that will be cut out of the film. <laughs> we promise. We promise. <laughs> um, is, it, is it Chiswick High Street? <laughs> Takes it up Chiswick High Street. Um, she doesn't take yeah. it up anywhere. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you never know. 
Friday night, our new blokes said, can we go to the cinema? What do you mean? You're taking me up the Ritzy? Yeah, off we go. <laughs>